This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back with you, Maine Architecture. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the 4 p.m. block, and I'm with Jason Selly. He's a co-founder of Workspace Workshop Hawaii Research and Design uh, Studio, and they are on Hotel in Uwano downtown. And their uh, oh, I should say, uh, and their website is www.workshop-hi.com. Thank you for joining us, Jason. It's a pleasure. Thanks Great for to having have me. you here. Yeah, I want to. I want, you're an architect by training, but you're a designer. And that means, you know, you're sort of a picture of creativity. Yeah, we try know? to, we, like I said, I, I treat our studio as a SWAT team of designers, and we try to pick up a lot more than just architecture and interiors, but product design, uh, furniture, lighting, really? and graphic. What, you know, a lot of times you need those instant gratification projects, too. So it'll take something on that'll take a day or a week or something fun like that. So. You know, I mean, I really believe in creativity. I think your yeah. life is better if you're in a creative space. How yeah. did you get to be in that space. Did you read a book one day? Did somebody tell you that you have a dream? What? You know, I grew up grew up on a small farm in Nebraska, and I think I had a lot of time to myself. So, <laughs> and in the summers, you're always kind of out in the shop, tinkering around with stuff, and you're building new things, and you're kind of keeping yourself busy. And I built a lot of forts and a lot of uh -huh. structures that I burned down uh, and, and shot, you know. Uh, just With your hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of where it started, you know, you're just, with the, with the amount of time you have just to be creative, to keep yourself entertained um, out, out in the country that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And so, you know, I worked construction and I kind of enjoyed um, you know, bringing things to life in, this, in that sense and understanding um, building technologies. And then when I went to uh, Iowa State for, for, uh, for college, I started out in the vet program because that's kind of what I was interested in off the farm. But quickly I had some friends in the architecture program and I thought what they were doing was it was really interesting and it was well-rounded. You know, you're learning culture, you're learning history, you're learning oh, yeah. technical, you're yeah. learning creative. And, and you're learning nature, the, yeah. the, the tactile experience of nature. Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, yeah. kind of drove a lot of our program and, yeah. and uh, a lot of our field trips too. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Um, and so, you know, coming out here, I think um, as- 15 years ago. 15 years ago. The, as my practice and, and uh, interest evolved, you know, understanding and it, the amount of time it takes to develop a building in Hawaii, uh, it's kind of nice to have some side projects that were, um, were a little quick and, and working with different kind of bubbles of, of people as well, you know, not just developers or, yeah. or um, well, all those types of clients. Let's say about real estate. Real estate is not about land, it's about relationships. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. suppose you can say the same thing for architecture and design. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, since we started our studio, it's, it's been, um, you know, all of our relationships coming to us that, you know, we've worked with in the past, or word of mouth, especially, not a whole lot of marketing here. You just, somebody hears you're doing something new and they're curious about it, and and um, we start talking and we've gotten a great, great uh, portfolio in the last couple of years. Have you, have you heard of design thinking? Design it's thinking? It's out of Stanford. Mm. And uh, Oceanet, which is down the block, yep. a tech company yep. sort of brought it into town. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about design thinking is you have a client and the client wants something, but then you're giving him feedback. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, no, no, you don't really want that. Let me explain what you really want. And then the two of you negotiate what he really wants, mm. and then you take that road instead. And so I have a feeling of design thinking, you know, the word design is the operative word there. Um, and so you probably are engaged in a process just like that when you are respectful of the client's wishes, uh, at least to some extent, and then, but you also feed back on the client's re uh, wishes. I, I definitely think that's our job, and that's why we bring value to a client is you know, our job is to bring things to the table that they might not be aware of, or, you know, like I said, focused a lot of my career on design or performing high performance design, yeah. environmental design, yeah. or um, products that they're not aware of. Yeah. You know, technology is evolving it's the so whole fast, world especially in synergy, the, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Everything. So, what I, I like to do is take that basic idea that they've, they've given us and then showcase a lot of um, kind of products or, or ideas that can stem off of that, that they might not have thought about, mm -hmm. and see, you know, what direction they want to take with it. They ever come so. to you, Jason, and say, look, 
<clears throat> we know that you are nascent designers. You know you're going to come up with stuff. So look, here's the here's the box. Here's the container. We don't really want to influence you. Mm -hmm. Just do something inside the container, and and we'll do it. Whatever you say. Ever have that experience? You know, I wish I could say I have. It's, <laughs> there's always parameters. A lot of times it's money, the budget. Sure, it's always and money. It's always money, yeah. <laughs> Time and money. Um, but um, we've, we've been fortunate to have amazing clients that have given us a lot of freedom and have trusted that um, we are going to make good design decisions. And, you know, there's, they're investing a lot of money into that. And so sure. you're taking risks as well. Yeah. And, and I think... Um, Late, you know, with with the new studio, uh, with with workshop, we've had a lot more of those clients saying, "We want to do something different. We're not quite sure how we want to do it. Let's let's throw around some ideas." And as a smaller shop, I think they can afford to have us give a little more time in yeah. through that creative process and not just get straight to production. Well, so. you want to make a statement, but sometimes the client wants to make a statement. Oh, absolutely, too. yeah. And I think brands are changing. And you know, with how quickly. Um, um, the uh, you know the, the I don't know the trends are evolving and what people really want you know you imagine like sure. the craft beer scene and and um, <laughs> you know the coffees and these other you know boutique kind of restaurants and cafes people want handcrafted local something with a, a personality and kind of um, steering away from the the big the big boys I think a little yeah. bit more and, and that goes to the whole thing about having yeah. a good experience providing a good experience. Um, you know, surrounding somebody with space that enlivens him yeah. or her, yeah. um, and, 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 and sort of engage with the creativity. So, <clears throat> we have some photos. Why don't you describe the photos for us so we can mm -hmm. see the real you, Jason? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I think I just put together a couple um, fun small projects that, that we completed this last year. Um, and even two years ago, I think, right when we first started. But this is the Harley Davidson Boutique. Uh, shop in International Marketplace that we had just wrapped up with late last year. And the clients had asked us to kind of rethink Harley Davidson, which mm. has such a strong history and brand, and you don't really want to mess with that. Um, but the idea of kind of crafting a different experience, so it's, it's like, a, you know, Harley's the ultimate man cave kind of space. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have to be consistent with that. Consistent with that, and we kind of looked at materials and the black leather and the steel and a lot of, a lot of uh, fun design inspiration, and we tried to kind of shop the catalog of bike parts, too, yeah. and you could see in that previous slide. Yeah, uh, yeah, so this is the same thing. Slide, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we tried to get in little elements without getting too kitschy. Yeah. Um, but something, if you look close enough, you'd realize that that was off a, yeah. off a Harley. You're sending all these messages to people, yeah. and you're giving them an opportunity to resonate. You're, you're providing um, a whole affirmation of the Harley brand and all that. It's yeah. Beyond the Harley and it, brand. And to have Harley, you know, as a client ask you to do cool. something like that, you know, and they, they brought it to National, and, you know, they yeah. liked the idea, and... So, you know, messing with Harley's brand is, is sensitive. And so, and they I won't say mess, but just like evolving the they brand for, for something like International Marketplace, which is a little higher end uh, yeah. retail experience. Yeah. yeah. So, even International Marketplace, I think, was kind of like, do we want a, a Harley in here? You know, yeah. does that fit kind of our vibe? Yeah. Um, and then after we showed them the ideas that we had and kind of using the black walnut and the, the black and steel and. Um, Everybody, and we had some really great woodworkers in there. So, how too. does that happen? I mean, you have this moment of inspiration where you say, hmm, black walnut, hmm, steel. Or you, you sit down with photographs and samples and, sure. and spend a day, you know, uh, have in angst mm -hmm. trying to figure out the right one. You know, I think for us it was combining the kind of biker, like that speed shop, um, custom bike shop. Yeah feel with men's boutique that you might get a custom suit or, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Um, um, something literally like rich, like a men's, you know, like a whiskey bar or something like that with yeah. the black walnut is kind yeah. of where we're leading. Then we've got this great uh, display table in the center with turned wood and it's, it's, um, it's got a Harley, a custom Harley on it. And that's the, that's the wow, you know, people walk by and just have to go in and take pictures with the bike. And you have to, you have to sort of let your mind flow to yeah. figure out these. Now, you talked before about the SWAT, the SWAT approach. Yeah. How, how does that work when you make selections of materials and designs? Well, I, I think what the SWAT team is, you know, with these kind of ideas, we're, we're throwing a lot of ideas out really quickly. And we'll get together and we'll brainstorm and, you know, all of us will sit down and, at a table and 
really talk about what either the style or the history or kind of the formula that the, the, the recipe that we want to use to create something new yeah. and then um, how do how do you kind of like mix that up or put it all together in a different way so it's it's taking certain elements that you can't that are fundamental to that brand or, or the personality of the client, especially with restaurants, you know, that's their personal we'll product. Yeah, that. there's a lot of a lot of character that goes into um, a personal character that goes into the restaurant space. Yeah. So it's how do you create something different that um, that still evokes that personality? You know, I remember when I did radio, the mm -hmm. big thing was that you had to in, you had to ideate the listener. Yeah. You had to ha make a Mr. Potato Man person who was your personal listener mm -hmm. and see things or hear through things through his, his, his ears. And I would, I would guess that, that this is experience you have too because you, you have to see this hypothetical customer, if you will. Um, what, is he, what is he turned on by? What does he want? Uh, what are his sensibilities? What, experience, uh, what, what is his life experience? And, what kind of experience do you want to give him now? It's, it's a matter of looking through his eyes, isn't it? That's great. You see, you're, you're right on track. We, we've even done design proposals, especially for the boutique hotels, giving you a kind of a demographic of who's coming in, ah. their daily experience, ah. you know, what they do from 8 a.m. Yeah, or right. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. And they're, you know, the- Get in their the whole, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of fun too, you know, to tell a story, almost to describe the design, that you're proposing through the eyes of uh, oh, uh, a customer, yeah, or a client. So. Let's see some more photos. Yeah. Um, I think the other it. other projects we had on here, yeah, this is Mud Hen Water. So this is one of the very first clients we had, Ed Kenny, um, down in Kaimuki. So much fun. You know, Ed just really wanted a, a uh, kind of a cozy um, community restaurant that spoke to the spirit of Kaimo Key, and uh, we were like, what elements do you really see on every block in Kaimo Key? And it's that breeze block, uh -huh. you know, concrete. Yes. And, um, yes. you know, we talked about just kind of keeping the, a lot of the raw elements of, of the building that we had kind of deconstructed. Um, so you see the scars um, of the previous space that uh -huh. are still exposed and uh -huh. kind of just playing around with, um, that indoor outdoor, we got this great roll up door off of Craigslist um, from North Shore and just blew out a wall and kind of opened it up. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, it was, it was a great project to kind of kick off the studio with. It's very um, inviting. It wants you. It, it, it that's calls my favorite bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To sit at. It's, it's, it's one of those that uh, you, you feel right at home and it's pretty cozy. I love the platform idea. I yeah. love the rail around the platform yeah, idea. Yeah. It's protected. It's for special situations. Yeah. It's it's for those who want a little more privacy than the counter. It's yeah. it's a beautiful idea. Yeah, I mean, and you know, we just did a lot with, you know, really simple elements, concrete and uh -huh. plywood. Yeah, and that was about it. We, um, I think, one of these slides show kind of the one wow element that um, we were all so excited about and splurged a little bit on um, was the parquet flooring that we were able to get from Reuse Hawaii. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that, yeah that came from uh, the Honolulu Advertiser building. So that's a 100-year-old floor. And we had the guys rip uh, about a quarter inch off it. It was covered in black ink. Oh, and so really? it, it was from the, yeah, press. from the press. And so when we, um, when we ripped off that quarter inch, it exposed that grain. And we just thought, all right, that's absolutely amazing, that, that pattern. And we just clear-coated it. And it's, it's just fantastic. Yeah, that's, it is. I mean, as, a, as an idea, too. Yeah. It strikes me that, you know, you want to have a kind of continuum, historical continuum. You want to connect the place mm -hmm. um, with the neighborhood, with the people who are in there, with the history of, of Hawaii, yeah. and, and make it, um, a, a, you're sort of connected with, with everything around us. Yeah. And therefore, you feel that you're at home somehow. Yeah, yeah you know, it, I think anytime you can kind of have that, heart and soul and that's a good story behind it yeah, you know yeah. it's not just you just didn't just like like you said you just didn't have a clean slate to design something that whatever just making something cool it's got to have a spirit you know and so I think that was that was a great project yeah, to kick yeah. things off and kind of um, you know fortunately I think uh, clients are kind of looking a lot a lot more for something with a with a deeper spirit and soul you try to do that in every project. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So every project is unique. You're never going to do a, a cookie cutter. 
no, from no, one to yeah. the other. Yeah, I think for us, like the SWAT team and research design, we're always like thinking um, how we can take take something. You know, if we're we're getting approached by clients that have had the same formula for years that's worked, but they're like, hey, you know, I think it's time to shake things up a little bit. And so it's been fun. Well, you know, a lot of, you know, my view, everything changes. Yep. Uh, you know, they used to say, uh, tout ça change, tout la même. Uh, now they say, tout ça change, tout ça change. I can't do this. Tout ça change. It's always changing. Everything's yeah. always changing. Yeah, yeah. So if I, if I come to you with my business, and I say, you know, design me something, or rather, take a look at what I have and design me something, you're always going to want to put it one step ahead mm -hmm. and sort of update it to how things have changed since it was original. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's been the advice we've been given all along, too, is, is um, you'll come up with something that you think is fun and unique and, and just, all right, put that aside and what's next what's yeah, next what's yeah. next and so it's kind of been fun it, sometimes it keeps you up at night and you can't ever turn your mind off yeah um, but you have an audience out there yeah you have you know the whole public is, is whether they realize it's you or not yeah. it, oh that's my favorite part of it all it's going into the spaces you design and watching people interact with it yes and, and um, you know like you said, sometimes you're just kind of off to the side, behind the scenes, and uh, but just watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it really feels good. It, it's 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 really fantastic to bring a new idea together like that. So that's Jason Selly. He's a designer with Workshop Hawaii uh, Research and Design Studio here downtown. And uh, when we come back from this break, we're going to talk about a significant change that has just been, you know, publicized, and that is the Amazon Go model. And we're going to talk to him about how that might change retail and, for that matter, restaurants going forward and, and uh, what it means for the, those businesses, what it means for the designer who creates the space for them. We'll be right back. You'll see. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Winston Welch. And every other Monday at 3 p.m., you can join me at Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. So please join us every other Monday at 3, and we'll see you then. Aloha. This is Humane Architecture, which plays at 4 o'clock um, every Tuesday. And, and we, you know, we like to examine our world. We'd like to examine how our human experience can be better. Martin Despang is the host of this program. He's not, he's not feeling well today, so I'm stepping in, but he, he introduced me to Jason Selly, who is the co-founder of Workshop Hawaii Research and a Design Studio right here downtown. And so we're having a wonderful time trying to find out about exactly how design works mm -hmm. and how you can express yourself and bring people into a kind of, you know, co combined collective experience where everybody wins, win, 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 win. Mm -hmm. um, this is a marvelous, you must be a happy person, Jason. Yeah, you know, I think it's important to, to be happy when you're doing these types of projects because it's, it's tough <laughs> and you, you, you have to make a lot of difficult decisions and you're dealing with time and money and with, it, it should be a fun process for the client yeah. too. If you're investing that much into something, it should be fun. It doesn't have to you're be painful. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you're putting a lot of your own personality and hoping someone can can translate that into design. So. You're you're memorializing your yeah. own thought, yeah. which is really yeah. fabulous. Oh. And then you go do the mud hen kind of restaurant thing, and, yeah. you, and you you're on the side as an observer. They don't know you're the one who designed it, yeah. and you yeah. see them come in there and they go, ooh and ah and wow, this is beautiful. And, ah, just, and that's lots of good. Yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about uh, Amazon Go. Yeah. Um, this is really an interesting idea that technology is going to redefine how retail works, and there won't be any cashier uh, booths or spaces anymore. Um, it'll be very minimalist in a way. Mm -hmm. It'll only have products around, although you and I talking, maybe a Starbucks kind of coffee shop in the middle would help 
draw traffic in. Yeah. But retail will be different if you don't, you know, if you don't have to worry about the what do you call it, the transactional obligations of shopping. You just go in there and you put it in your bag and you walk out again. That's pretty good. So how does this change your perception of the way a retail space should look? You know, that's an interesting question. I think, you know, with um, how quickly retail's evolved in the last five years and, you know, you're seeing the bookstores closing and kind of these, yeah, other, you, you know, it's, you it's a, yeah. how Amazon's driving commerce. Um, you're, you're seeing the big brands right now evolving. And um, I think we talked a little bit about Nike and Under Armour and Adidas creating more of a, um, an experiential showroom than calling it kind of a your typical retail store. Yeah. So they're, they're creating spaces that you go in and you play with their products and you test them out. You put on a pair of shoes. They actually are scanning you when you walk in. They, um, they, they can tell the size of clothes that you have, oh, the God. size of shoe. It's invasive. Yeah, well, you know, and that, that was a good point, too. They, people feel like it's creepy. But once they get past that, they really have a feeling like they enjoy that experience and how yeah. convenient it was. Yeah. And so it was like they, they related it to buying clothes off of Amazon five years ago. Nobody would have ever done that. And now it's kind of common uh, for, for people to do that. So I think... The, the, the majority of the public will get over that really fast just because of how convenient and, and how quick and easy the, the, the retail environment is going to be, I yeah. think, after that. Yeah, but, I agree. So what, what Nike's doing is they're creating in, in New York um, a mini basketball court and a little track with video screens that in you can change in the store that um, you can change to any environment you want to run through. And, um, <laughs> Literally and then, yeah, you, you just kind of you play around with their equipment, and then you can decide whether or not you want, you want to buy it. Um, the thing about Amazon Go and what you, you realize when you're shopping on Amazon, a lot of times they have recommended products. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, the way the stores will evolve, retail will evolve, I feel, is they'll, they'll still be... Not necessarily cashiers, but um, employees that recommend products yeah. to you. So you'll walk in, it'll recognize who you are, it'll yeah. understand yeah. what your price point is, what you're into, um, and that will then trigger something with, with one of the employees to go pick up a product that might be good for you. They'll come over and say, hey, you know, do you like this? Um, if you do, you put it in your bag and you just walk out the door. Let me, let me offer a thought. You know, employees, I mean, we like employees because yeah. it's labor force and it's jobs. Mm -hmm. But in fact, <clears throat> this model doesn't really care too much about jobs. They yeah. want to get the job done. Yeah. So suppose I say to you, Jason, when you walk in and you swipe your QR code on a, you know, like the subway kind of platform thing, yep. uh, now you're recognized. Well, everything happens. You know, the artificial intelligence is is uh, making a place for you. Mm -hmm. Now right in front of you, right in front of you, is this big monitor hanging down from the ceiling. And it says, Jay, you're back. We noticed uh, you know, that you bought three quarts of milk last time. You, you probably need some more milk. And it has an arrow pointing to where I'm going. Okay, and it follows me with the monitors. And mm -hmm. the monitors are always talking to me. Uh, or maybe on my cell phone, I mean, that's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always getting advice, just as you say, I'm getting advice about what I might need, what I might consider. And the store is giving me a pathway to the best places. And then I would add one more thought to that. Mm -hmm. You know, the very interesting thing about ABC stores here, if a product sells, okay, they move it forward and they have more of it. If it doesn't sell, they move it backward and out of the store, not there. So the offerings on the shelves mm -hmm. are always changing. And this, this really does a great job, you know, in selling product. I am sure to a moral certainty that's exactly what Amazon's going to do. So that means, you know, if a lot of milk is selling, there'll be more of it, and they'll be closer. And the, my, the signage that directs me to the So, you know, so would you include in your design monitors? Would you include in your design m modular shelving that can actually be moved overnight or even moved automatically to, can, you know, to include the right the, the inventory that will best comport with what the artificial intelligence machine is telling you you need to do? Yeah, I think so. You know, I know Lowe's is experimenting with robots already that kind of can help you through one of their, uh, you know, their large store, you know, the, one of the large warehouse kind of stores that 
it's, it's sometimes hard to find things, and you know, you'll get kind of a curated experience by um, by following this robot around. So it's it's you something similar. Yeah, I yeah. love it. I love yeah, it. So they, a cute yeah, robot. Like yeah, that. you know, something something really sweet and friendly that'll help you um, put together or what it is. Or lights on the floor, like on the airplane, yeah. lights yeah. that are. That are moving lights. Just follow the lights. They well, more lights. With Lowe's, especially your Home Depot, when you're trying to build something, you know, yeah, I need to fix my toilet, and it'll recommend all the pieces that you might need to do that. And, you know, that way you don't go home and forget it, yeah. get, forget something you really needed. Yeah. Um, and I think that's that's um, where that artificial intelligent technology is really coming in. Is it's starting to kind of curate that experience and recommend things for you, and and help make that easier for you to. Get Let me in go and out. further with one other yeah. thing, okay? This is from, you know, I don't know if you've ever been to B&H Photo in Manhattan. It's not. extraordinary. Mm. It's where a lot of the stuff in the studio comes from mm. B&H Photo, because it's the king. Okay? And in B&H Photo, when you go and you buy something at a counter, and you're talking to a clerk, he puts it in the computer, and some kind of mechanism happens where it's taken out of inventory, it's put in overhead racks, and, you know, trolleys. And by the time you get to the checkout booth, all your stuff is sitting all there. Wow. You have to carry it. It's yeah. right there for you. So if, if you know, for example, that I like uh, one quart of milk, one you know, loaf of bread, mm -hmm. um, I can have a package, you know, like a menu of stuff that I want. And I can have this conversation with them on my cell phone before. Mm -hmm. And I can say, well, give me you know, six SJ7. That's my menu. And when I get to the store, it's waiting. I just walk out with it. Yeah. Fantastic. And of course, Amazon can also deliver that package yeah. to you. So I guess the question is, do we need more space, less space? Do we need open space? Where is the space concentrated with this kind of, with these possibilities? Well, I think for retail, it becomes, I think we talked a little bit about it becoming a beacon for the brand and, you know, the understanding the, the, the soul and the, the heart of, of whatever product it is that you're wanting to buy. And then you can go buy it where, you know, however you want to. Amazon yeah, yeah. can drone it to your house. You know, they've got the one day fulfillment now. Right, and right. Those kinds of things. Um, but um, less about transactional space, but more about experiential space. Yes. And that kind of thing, be, you know. So I, I could see that being the, the future for these kinds of, um, of uh, you know, like, Maybe the, the more the retail side, but when you're talking grocery store, or Home Depot, or Lowe's, you know, I think that the automated fulfillment, similar to what Amazon has now, with um, robots taking off shelves what people order and putting them in boxes, and they pack it up and yeah, it's yeah, off yeah. and open, you know, the, yeah, a mini uh, robot like warehouse. I can see a grocery right store there. doing that for you, where you just put your list together, or similar, you know, on your refrigerator. You could put your shopping list together, and then you push order, and by the time you get to the grocery store, you go pick it up, and it's packed up and ready to go for you. So, so it's less space. A lot is happening behind. Yeah, yeah. I could see more the transactional space where you're just picking up a package or bags of groceries that you've pre-ordered, and um, you're, you're, yeah. you're walking out the door, and it's yeah. all paid for. Yeah, and you were, you were mentioning this kind of thing where you have a showroom only. Yep. Um, but you could actually integrate a showroom only with a delivery point with those trolleys on, you know, yeah. over, the, over the overhead yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And so you look at the showroom. This is like the Horn and Harder cafeteria back in the 30s. Mm. You push a button and presto digito, it appears yeah. at the checkout point. Yeah. Somebody hands you a bag full of everything you ordered, and it's automatically, the, the, you know, I guess the possibilities are enormous here. Yeah. You, know, when you put it all together. And of course, you have to have your Starbucks as well, so you can mm. talk to your friends, meet your friends. And have a uh, you know a, a Seinfeld kind of experience, you know. Yeah. But the question is, how do you design for this? It sounds like it has to be completely modular. It sounds like you have to allow for change in that in that configuration. And we say completely modular. You're talking about kind of the fixturing of the store, so you can re, you know always be retooling. And yeah, I, I think retail's a lot like that already. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Depending on seasonal items and always kind of playing around with what works and what doesn't. Um, and, uh, you know, merchandising is, is tough. And there's an interesting formula for that already. That um, there's a lot of science and theories that have gone sure. into that. Um, different kind of products, different kind of color schemes. Yeah, yeah. and, and I think like the, the, uh, the, you know, where that's at in your kind of field of view and what do you put right in front of you when you walk in the store. Americans always go right when they walk in and right? follow. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's kind of fun, fun uh, research that's been done in, in retail. People like to pet, 
you know, you want to still touch and feel what it is you're buying. And so I think that is still important in the retail environment, even if you don't buy it there. Um, but you still want to go in and, and understand what it feels like. You'd want to sit in a couch before you. you yeah, you, sure. You buy you sit it, the so. couch and a monitor and yeah. have something to push buttons. Yeah, and yeah. Make choices. Yeah, so I think yeah, that's just it. Is you could have your whole living room kind of curated for you, um, with all the you know the AV and your couch and whatever else you want. And um, you know, I was talking before about how the Amazon model will ultimately be exported mm -hmm. and the technology will be sold i mean it, it'll be a it'll be a box of technology a black box of technology and if you're a retailer you can buy that box mm -hmm. you don't get to look inside but it will operate your store it strikes me though it strikes me that somebody who can make unique design design unique to the products being sold in the store unique to the community and the you know the customers customer base that comes in the store, mm -hmm. you want to have somebody who understands those things in that situation to do the actual design of the store. Even though the technology is fabulous and it's going to be global, mm -hmm. it's the individual stores have to be individual, don't you think? You know, I think with the back-end side, the technology side, I wonder if it's easier just to almost like outsource that. And you can kind of have this kit of parts that you need, Yeah, but you don't have to understand the technology behind it. You just need to know that, you know, this it'll it recognize the person when they walk in, and your shoes will be three D printed by the time you get to, uh, you know, the back of the store to pick them up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, I, I, it's that's an interesting question. I don't know. It's uh, it's it's one of those things that, um, as it as Amazon evolves or Alibaba's system evolves, I'm sure they'll have the ability to kind of. You know, mix and match whatever um, they need to. I, I to, suspect to serve. you'll be there. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just yeah. the way you made that mud hen restaurant yeah. feel so kind of key, uh, you could make a store, high tech store, yeah. feel so kind of key. I think it still way. needs to. You know, it still has to have. Uh, that's you know, got to have the the unique brand um, and that experience that people want to have. And you know, that's just the back end of it, making it more convenient to get it. So. Yeah. And by, you know, I think grocery stores are going to pick up on it pretty quick, like you were saying. Yeah. Well, for now, it's uh, at least for Amazon, it's all groceries. But yeah, I suspect once they get the the bugs worked out, it'll be everything you can carry. Yeah. And yeah. what you can't carry, that'll be delivered by drone. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> or know. Or Uber. The, the, yeah. I don't know where the <laughs> FAA is at on that, but not. not so I'd right. offer one more thought. Yeah. <clears throat> that is that you know you there's a certain life. You know, a, u a useful life to a given design right now. Mm -hmm. We talked about, you know, how after a while, in order to renew this business premises, you have to update it, upgrade it, mm -hmm. redesign it, redevelop it somehow. Otherwise, it gets old. And Hawaii is not particularly sensitive to this, but the mainland is. Right, right. Um, and, you know, if you want this store to be, you know, sustainable and resilient against changes of all kinds, you have to go in and you have to. Do you agree with me? That this this interval is going to get shorter. Hmm. I think that you know, with how quickly this technology is evolving, and how quickly people have picked up on the how how comfortable people have gotten with online ordering everything. Yeah, that interval is going to get shorter, and it, I, I think that. Certain spaces are going to get a lot bigger, and other spaces a lot smaller. You know, um, it's depending on what it is that they're they're offering. But I think a lot. You know, they were Adidas is uh, having 3D knitting machines that you know you just push a button and, and go shop, and an hour later it's it's create kind of this bespoke <laughs> out jog jogging suit for you. Like, it's pretty amazing. You yeah. know, so. Um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what, what people gravitate towards, too, yeah. um, whether it is customization of everything and um, be able to, to just kind of design your own outfit and then it gets 3D yeah. printed or, or knitted for you in the shop, yeah. um, which is, you know, I know there's some shops in New York doing that right now where you can order a pair of jeans and, and they'll um, make them for you in an hour. That kind of thing. So. Fabulous. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I, I want to have a transactional experience. I want to be wowed. And you know what else, Jason? I'll mm -hmm. pay more yeah. for that experience. That's what's coming. Yeah. And you're yeah. going to be there. You're going to be right on this. I don't think it's right too far behind, you know. Yeah. Thank uh, you, Jason. Yeah.
Yeah. Sally, yeah. designer for excellence. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks.